and welcome to my first video with voiceover! Da 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 da! Uh, <laughs> um, this video uh, has this voiceover because I wanted to go ahead and explain my process on these. Uh, most of the videos that I've posted so far have just been little like sketches or like quick animations or uh, more recently time lapses because I have that feature now that I use Clip Studio Paint. Yay! <laughs> so one of the big like art projects that I like to work on over the years have been custom character sheets. I started doing them back in 2018 and I've done them for three different campaigns so far. Uh, one with um, five players, then four players, then six players. So I've gotten a lot of practice in over the last couple of years. This set though is very special to me because it's actually a redraw of the very first ones that I did back in 2018 that I already said earlier. <laughs> Since I've done a lot of improving over the years, both in like actual art and then also in uh, the character sheets themselves, I really wanted to update them, especially considering we are still in fact playing this campaign, so we're still going to use them. <laughs> we are planning to end this campaign probably by the end of this year or so, so it's a little bit bittersweet, but uh, it was like, I wanted to give everybody one last gift uh, from me this campaign I mean the first video that I posted here to this YouTube channel is for this campaign my little unstoppable uh, music video <laughs> so I mean all these characters have a pretty special place in my heart um, now that I've rambled for probably a little too long I'll actually get this video started so, why don't I just start with introducing the characters. This is Dotmik, a hill dwarven trickster cleric. Dotmik is what I would lovingly call a chaos gremlin. He has a very legal bag with very legal substances in it and is best known for busting kneecaps. <laughs> uh, his story involved the rediscovery of an ancient dwarven kingdom, which at the beginning of the campaign was just seen as a legend. His grandfather had spent his whole life trying to find it, claiming to have memories of living there himself. But one day he disappeared, and Dominic never forgot about him. Dominic has spent most of his life sailing the ocean, so when a kraken came and destroyed the ship, he was resigned to die with it, an honorable sailor's death. That was just the beginning of the campaign though, so we all had other plans. Yeah, uh, that's how our campaign started. With the four of us, two on a Crowns Guard ship and two on a pirate ship, chasing each other down in an epic battle across the ocean, only to be struck down by a monster of the sea. <laughs> there weren't many survivors, but those of us who did had to learn to get along quickly or be drowned by the ocean waves. Clearly that worked out, since we're four years deep in this campaign and uh, we're still playing the same characters. <laughs> Okay, so I said the four of us, but I'm sure you noticed at the beginning that there were actually five character sheets. This is where our next character comes in. This is Von Nilo, our sea elven sharpshooter fighter. She's our archer of the group, a fish out of water, kind of literally. I mean, she's an elf, not a fish, but uh, the water stuff is true. Growing up a princess in her noble house underwater, she always felt different from those around her. She was rough, strong, and adventurous, hardly a perfect fit to the poison grace her people expected of her. Though she loves her home, she longed to be out and explore, see the world, and maybe find somewhere she felt like she belonged. So she decided the next chance she got, she was gonna run away from home. Oh boy. That's where our party comes in. Like, actually a party. Um, our group was stuck in a city with our boat being held hostage by a big undersea guy who had like a double life as a rich noble man. So we decided to set up a party for all the richest and noblest people around, specifically to expose the guy and his wrongdoings to his people. We were hoping this would either get him arrested and then he couldn't keep our boat hostage anymore, or it would cause good enough a distraction that we could abscond with it that night. Of course, the Nilo family was there, which gave Fawn the chance she needed. 
At the end of the night, the lights went dark and we all escaped with our party boat in tow. As well as a stowaway. Now we've come to my character, Quintel Calora, or Quinn for short. A half-elven warlock of the Great Old One, with a pension for almost dying! A lot! <laughs> he grew up with his father on an island away from any of the main continents, though it wasn't uninhabited or anything like that, far from it. Tore Rock, or Forest Rock in Elvish, is sprawling with all sorts of people, and their military gets commissioned by nearby continents to help them out with any battles or wars on occasion. Since his father was higher up in those ranks, and it's what he knew best, when Quinn reached 16, he joined up with the Legion to help his father keep food on the table, to his own father's dismay. After fighting for some time, in a near-death encounter with Death's Deep, he awoke on the shore, unsure of how he got there and how he lived, holding an ancient staff in his hand. Through it, he learned he could cast magic, but also that he was connected with some entity that he knew nothing about. Uncertain of what it all meant, he decided to leave home and find out, maybe also trying to find his missing mother along the way. Quinn's kind of our mage of the group, a bit more of a straight lace kind of guy, though that only makes it more fun to mess with him. Still, he cares a lot for the people around him, and also about doing good wherever he goes. He did eventually figure out what entity is linked to the staff that he now wields. The evil shark god Sekula of the hunt. Yeah, so that's a little awkward. Regardless, he plans to use this power for good and good alone, even while Sekula whispers dark deeds in his ears. Well, we've still got two more characters to go, so let's keep this train moving. Next is Soot, a swashbuckler rogue. She is a changeling, born from a changeling father and a tiefling mother. She grew up in a brothel, with many different people acting as various parental figures, siblings, and friends. It takes a village to raise a child, as the saying goes, and a village Soot did have. When she left home at 18, it was to see the world and grow as a person beyond her little island she'd grown used to. You'll notice here that I'm drawing uh, three characters, actually, and that's because I wanted to include a couple of her most common transformations on this sheet. The Dark Elven persona is named Selenzara, and she has a love for cooking. Because of that, she's got proficiency with cook's utensils uh, whenever she's in this form, so she kind of doubles as our little uh, cook on our ship. <laughs> the human form, however, is named Soon. It was a form given to her by her goddess of the same name, Soon, who is the goddess of love and beauty. Um. Uh. Unscripted side note, by the way, when I looked it up, you know, uh, soon info on like wiki just to make sure that I was getting all the stuff right, uh, I noticed that it had a pronunciation next to it, um, and it says it's supposed to be pronounced SUNY, but it's spelled like S-U-N-E, so for the past five years we've been pronouncing it soon, and we're not gonna change it now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the soon form gift. Uh, because it was a gift from her goddess, it like gives her extra bonuses to things like uh, persuasion proficiencies. I think just generally charisma checks on people. Um, it's, so it's used pretty often, I'd say. So it's got quite a sharp tongue, which gets her into trouble just about as much as it'll get her out of it. Maybe more so, actually. She gets in trouble quite a bit. <laughs> but we certainly love her all the same. I remember at the beginning of the campaign, when, uh, when Soot was first being made, they had the idea that she would be a rogue, but she'd be, like, in the back line and, uh, going with, like, a crossbow or, you know, long range sort of thing. Uh, they hadn't really done that kind of rogue yet, so they were excited to. And then they immediately, like, first battle, just went charging in with their daggers, and it was like, 
Wait, hold on now. <laughs> so initially Soot was like a scout rogue, uh, but our DM was super nice. This was before Tasha's came out with the option to, with the options on how to change your subclass. Uh, our DM was super nice in being like, hey, no, we can definitely change your subclass. Uh, so then later she became a swashbuckler rogue. <laughs> Lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have Violet. She's a special Kenku of the Sun Soul Monks. I say special because she was gifted with the ability to speak early on from the Sun God, Fultis. Or as she likes to call him, Sun Man! <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. Um, my best friend does like the most amazing voice for Violet and there's just no way that I could ever replicate it. Um, she likes to call him Sun Man. <laughs> uh, Violet was adopted by a pirate captain and a Crownsguard enforcer. An unlikely couple, but a loving pair nonetheless. She grew up with amazing tales of all these sorts of adventures that her father would go on, uh, being the pirate captain he is, and the big storyteller he is too. Naturally, this led to her love of pirates and sailing the high seas, and she always dreamed of following in her father's footsteps. A little to her mother's dismay, but, uh... <laughs> Well, I mean, she fell for him too, so can she really blame Violet? <laughs> Regardless, that is all five of our player characters introduced. Um, so I guess now it's just time to start showing you guys the front side of the character sheets. All right. After all that intro, I'm going to be jumping around here a little bit between uh, talking a little bit about the characters that I'm drawing on the screen or talking a little bit about my process on uh, the character sheets in general. Uh, I'll start with more on Dotmic. Since we have been playing so long, we've done lots of story stuff by now. We did, of course, find the ancient Dwarven Kingdom, as well as Dotmik's grandfather, and freed them both from the plane of existence that they had been trapped in. We fought through a war and through Asmodeus himself to do it. Asmodeus? Asmodeus? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> though the battle left his face permanently scarred, he wears the scar as proudly as he does his crown, which he earned after freeing the people of the kingdom. Yep. Dominic's a king, or at least he will be uh, once he's finished traveling the world and adventuring. <laughs> Dominic is a cleric of Lyra. Say, I looked this one up. <laughs> Who is the Lady of Deceptions or of the Mists? She's the goddess of deception and illusions. Pretty fitting for a trickster cleric. I was really happy to be able to redo this one, uh, this front sheet for Dominic. Something that I tried to keep consistent the first time that I did these was I tried to keep them all in action poses, and I always felt like Dominic was one of the weaker ones. It definitely was technically still an action pose, or like a combat pose, since he was, you know, at the ready with his weapons and stuff, but it just didn't feel right having him stand so still. As I said earlier, Dominic's a chaos gremlin, and if he's not moving, he doesn't know what to do with himself. Also, it meant that I could add more McDeck everywhere. That's the gecko. <laughs> Dominic got that thing early on, like literally session one, purely because the player just looked at the DM and said, can I find a gecko? <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. We all love McDeck. I won't lie, it was especially fun to redo these because I made sure to include the players this time around uh, in the making process. Last time I wanted it to be a big ol' surprise, so I didn't tell anybody really. And it was a lot harder to guess what uh, they wanted for their sheets. I mentioned it here on this one particularly because I sent uh, the player like 12 different versions of a couple different color combinations I had for Dotvik. Um, but we definitely chose the right one in the end. So 
So you'll notice the uh, time lapse for Vaughn's front page is a little bit different than everybody else's. After I'd finished all my sketching and figuring out what kind of pose I wanted for Fawn to have, I realized that I'd kind of already drawn that. So I went to the previous piece that I had done and grabbed that and moved it over to the front page. I did a little bit of tweaking, which you'll see uh, closer to the end of this section. Tweaking like uh, different shading, different highlights, uh, just making sure it fit on the page nicely. But since I was lucky enough to have already recorded that time lapse, I just decided to move that info to right here in the video. Uh, so if you've already watched that previous video, this will all look very familiar. But I still thought it'd be interesting to keep all together like this. I actually did that quite a bit on some of these character sheets, reusing recent drawings that I had made of these characters and putting them on the sheets. For example, on the back of Soot's piece, uh, you'll notice that the character face just kind of shows up there. That's because I had already done that piece for that player a little bit earlier in the same year. I made uh, car stickers. <laughs> The same thing is true for the same, uh, like, Violet profile character on actually both the front and back. So when you get to the front, I'll probably talk about that a little bit too. For now though, let's get back to Fawn. Right here is what I meant when I said that I would uh, tweak it at the end, basically. Like the different shading and highlighting here. The other fun challenge was figuring out how to put the boxes around her. I'm not at all afraid of changing the different like box sizes and figuring out what fits best on the page, as well as what will fit best for each of our players. Now what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is different players will use different boxes for different things, and different amounts of things. So. One player might have a lot of languages and proficiencies to write down, while another might only have one or two. And also, you don't need the HP box to take up half of the page, okay? I just writing a number once or twice, like it's not that big a deal. <laughs> With all that in mind, I like to change the size of the boxes and the placement on the sheet uh, per each player. I mentioned that the first time I did this, I made it a surprise, but pretty much ever since then, I like to make sure to involve my players just to make sure that I get the sheet just the way they want it. For example, I'll just send them like a sketch of it, basically, with all the boxes in the right spot and where they want to be, and then I'll have a sketch of where the character is going to be and what they're going to look like. That way, if it's not finished, it still gets to be a bit of a surprise for them, and, of course, in the sketch phase, you can still move things around as necessary. I was also very excited to redo Quinn's. Uh, last time I did these, uh, I made sure to do all of the others before I did mine. Just because I know that, in general, I'm always like really excited to do mine. And I was worried that if I didn't do mine last, then I wouldn't have the motivation to finish all the other ones. I really should have trusted myself more though, because what ended up happening was I got everybody's done, and then I only had to finish mine, and then I was like, oh no, I have to finish it quickly because I want to give everybody their sheets because I'm all excited because it's a big old surprise, so I ended up rushing through my own character sheet. I won't lie, part of the motivation of redoing these was so that I could get a character sheet that I actually am proud of. Luckily, that is indeed what happened. I am so, so happy with this. He's living his best life. I'm proud of him. <laughs> Speaking of getting to redo character sheets that kind of need to be redone, here's Suts again. <laughs> Although I did really, really like the pose that I had for the original one, we both agree, me and the player, uh, that it wasn't really a pose that was indicative of her personality. I like to imagine this is kind of like her panache 
Uh, that's a ninth level ability that she gets as a swashbuckler rogue. Um, it just makes it so that, like, you one on one the person basically, and if they try to attack anybody else, then they got disadvantage. That's a very, like, rough estimation, by the way. Uh, if you are actually looking to play a Swashbuckler Rogue, you should definitely look up the ability and all the different nuances of it. Um, but for the purposes of this video, that's, that's pretty much what it does. I'm sure you've noticed by now that in most of our introductions, I've definitely mentioned some kind of god in the character's story or backstory or anything like that. That's cause that's kind of the premise of uh, the overall story of the campaign. All five of us were chosen by a god to fight as their champion in the god war. <laughs> Domic, of course, chosen by his goddess Lyra. Same with Soot and Soon. Uh, Violet and Sunman, Fultus, <laughs> Quinn reluctantly by Sekola, and Fawn by Nord, a god of the sea and wind. We're getting to that home stretch here now with this uh, last front sheet of Violet, of course. I would say this is the one that I have the most mixed feelings on. I'm still really, really proud of that first one that I did, um, and I didn't really want to just redraw that, so I ended up doing something very different. Uh, like I said before, I just used part of something that I had drawn earlier this year, and then I like shifted the legs a little bit, so it's like, it's not, I like it, but I think I like that first one a little bit more. But I also really like that first one, so I'm like, sometimes if you just do another one, you'll always think of that first one anyway, and maybe that's what would have always happened, so... In general, though, I'm very happy with all these and how it turned out, and now that I've got it all printed out and given to each one of my players, I think that everybody else is also real happy about them, too gonna take a quick moment here to say thank you so 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 much to my DM uh, for making this world and letting us play our characters in it for so so long. I'm really excited for this ending and I've had such a blast playing in this world. With all that being said though, let me show you the finished product. Well, that's it. I sure hope that you enjoyed. It was definitely a lot of fun to put this video together. Um, really glad that I thought about it and started the time lapse early on in the process so that I could go ahead and put this all together. Doing this first recording um, was very nerve wracking. <laughs> I couldn't do it when anybody else was in the house or at least in the room that I was in. So it probably took longer to make this video than it had any right to be, honestly, but it was still really fun to put together and I'm really excited to have it all posted and have it all done. If you've got any more questions about my process, uh, you can certainly leave them in the comments and I'm happy to answer. I'm still a very small uh, YouTuber, so it's really easy to do that right now. 
And let's be real, this is probably not going to be the last character sheet video I ever do on this channel. They're just way too much fun. If you'd like to stick around, I've certainly got some more videos that you can watch, although not too many uh, right now. I've pretty much just got a lot of art time lapses and a couple of like animations and comics. There's not too much going on here yet, but someday I think it'll be full of videos. No matter what you do with the rest of your day though, I hope you have a wonderful time doing it. That is to say, have a wonderful day guys! Bye bye! Do 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 do